We can still be one while maintaining an individual identity. Otherwise, you will get into your 60s and still be married to somebody who you view, see, and treat like a child. It is not cute at all. What you value is what you actually spend time doing. What we're doing, why we're doing it, why we think the way that we think. It's like the no gets caught in your throat. It's saying yes, but thinking no is just as good as lying. Trigger warning. Keeping you from recognizing evil. Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my page, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. I am Mia and today we are going to be doing a boundaries recap. But before we get into that, if you are new here, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my page and make sure your post notifications are on because I do post at least three videos a week. And while you're down there, do not skip past the description. There I have different links to brands that I'm working with. I have my Etsy shop as well as a link to my Instagram if you guys are interested in seeing a little bit more of my content on a daily basis as well as submitting questions for Q&A's and things like that. But with all that being said, we are going to be doing a recap of boundaries. Now, just so you guys know, all of the videos so far have encompassed the entire first third of the book. So as far as the table of contents goes, the first section is what are boundaries? So we have officially gone through all of the chapters covering what a boundary is and why that's important is because you need to know what a boundary is so that you know what a boundary is not. Now moving into the next part of the series, we're actually going to get a lot more in depth on actual boundary conflicts in relationships. So just for example, I will have videos on boundaries with your friends, your family, your spouse, your children, work, technology, yourself, and God. They are going to be a little bit longer than what my videos in the past have been because I want to get an entire chapter into one video. So be on the lookout for that. I'm most excited about the boundaries with in-laws video. That one I've already started reading and scripting and I'm very excited to get that one out for you guys because it is so impactful. But I thought that before we move on to the next section, it it would be nice to kind of look back at all the videos that I've done so far and to just pull out one piece of wisdom or my favorite tip from each video. So if this is the first video that you are seeing of this series, just a recap, there are nine videos that went before this one. I would definitely encourage you to check those out, but in this video we will be recapping them starting at the first video, which is entitled Boundaries, Recognizing and Overcoming Issues with Biblical Wisdom. In this video, I quoted Matthew 5 verses 3 through 5, which say, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now from that, my favorite verse or my favorite part of that section of verses was just the first one that says, blessed are the poor in spirit. And in that whole video, I talk a lot about how people who are struggling with boundary issues struggle with feeling blessed and receiving God's blessing. So the encouragement for that video is even if you're currently going through a tough time that you are blessed and to just remember that. Now the second video in the series is entitled Healthy Relationship Habits, Setting Boundaries to Empower Love and Personal Responsibility. So in this video, my favorite point was that we are not responsible for one another, but we are responsible to one another, which if you've watched my other videos, you're well aware that there are non-responsives. So Going back to this video, I do just want to point out now that being responsible to people and not for people is not the same as non-responsive who completely neglect their ability to people and for people. 
but that is gone into a lot in depth in the navigating narcissism video. So if that's something that you're interested in or confused about, definitely go ahead and check that video out. Moving on to the third video in this series. This one is entitled Divine Boundaries, Understanding God's Design for Boundaries in Our World, part one. Now here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 we read each one must give as he has decided in his heart not reluctantly or under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. So my favorite point in this video was to stop giving things reluctantly or begrudgingly or under compulsion and that ultimately our words are boundaries. We can say no we we can say I don't want to or I don't like that or I can't those are boundaries that we can say using our word and in that video I go a lot in depth on different boundaries that are God made and that are things that we might overlook in our day-to-day -day life like words that we might not even see them as boundaries and we might not see giving begrudgingly as something that is a God made boundary moving on the next video is entitled divine boundaries understanding god's design for boundaries in our world part two so this one was actually kind of hard to pick what my favorite point in the video was because i really liked the boundary of time i like how the book demonstrated what time was or how time was a boundary but my favorite point from that video would have to be that the issue with boundaries is often the consequences or the lack thereof because often they are not followed up often we don't follow through with what we say we're gonna do and that causes so many issues and one of my favorite pieces of advice or quotes from the book in that video was just the question how many marriages would be saved if somebody had actually followed through on saying that if this behavior continued then I'm going to x y or z I go in depth on that in that video so if that's something you're interested in definitely check out those two videos the next three are all on what is in your metaphorical backpack so the first one of that little mini series in a series is entitled unpacking boundaries exploring feelings attitudes and beliefs in our metaphorical backpack so my favorite point from this video was that our feelings are in our metaphorical backpack and what that means is we are responsible for our own feelings and that our feelings should not be our masters they are great indicators they are great signals I also talked about this in my three lessons from three years of marriage one of the points was completely about how feelings do not make good masters because it is such a vital point and difference to make in life so that is talked about in depth in this first backpack video the second backpack video is entitled unpacking emotional backpacks a spiritual exploration of emotional baggage now my favorite point in this video was that our beliefs and our values are not the same. Both of these things are in our backpacks, but when I read about what you value and how that's your responsibility, what I learned is that what you value is what you actually spend time doing. So many people say, I'm a Christian, but the amount of time that they spend does not show that that is something that they value. They might believe, but they do not value it. So that to me was a really important point because especially just in your day-to-day -day relationships, we might say that we value our marriages, but if it comes last on the roster, if we're not really spending a lot of dedicated time to our marriage or to our family or to our kids or with our relationship with God, then it's not actually something you value. My encouragement here would be spend a couple of days or even a week just 
tracking what you spend time doing because that will reveal to you what you actually value and if there are things in your life that you are idolizing or that you're valuing that you don't even realize it's definitely a humbling reality check to get your beliefs and your values in alignment because they're both your responsibility now the last backpack video is entitled exploring spiritual boundaries what's in your backpack now starting in matthew chapter 22 verse 36 it says teacher speaking to jesus what is the greatest commandment in the law and he this is jesus said to him you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the great and first commandment and a second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself so my favorite point from this video was that love is actually something that is in your backpack because you might hear in the christian world that love contrary to the secular belief is not a feeling it's a choice in this video i spoke a lot about what that actually means practically and one of my favorite things in reading this and realizing that the ability to love is actually a gift from God. God gave us the ability to love others and because it is a choice, we have the responsibility to actually exercise loving people just like our physical heart, our love muscle needs an inflow of love and an outflow of love to work properly and that is our responsibility and I talk a lot about that in that video but in reading back it was also just kind of nice to refresh myself on all the things that I've talked about in this series because there are little things that I picked up this time reading that are so deep and meaningful and it's easy to skip over little points like that when you're just looking for how can I establish boundaries in a specific relationship it's easy to skip over something like this where you're reading that the ability to love is something that is your responsibility because it was a gift from God and picking my favorite point from these three videos probably was the hardest because the backpack part of this book was what stood out to me the most in reading this book several times so I would definitely encourage you guys to go back and check out those videos because they are so chocked full of biblical wisdoms and just such spiritual guidance so if that's something you guys are interested in if you're curious about what your responsibilities are it definitely is a great place to start in just realizing what your responsibilities are and what your responsibilities are not but also to just know that what is your responsibility what's in your backpack is also what's in everyone else's backpack so that means we are not responsible for other people's feelings we are not responsible for other people's love nor are we responsible for other people's values and beliefs all of the things that are in your backpack are your responsibility and they are also correspondingly in other people's backpacks and are their responsibilities but with all that being said the next video in this series is entitled unlocking healthy relationships navigating boundary problems so in this video I break down two of the different boundary problem personalities one of which being a compliant now compliance probably the most common compliance are people who say yes to the bad and my favorite point from this section of the video was that when you say yes to things that are bad for us it might just be like you know what i'm giving sacrificially i'm just trying to be nice and often when you are raised that way and when that is your mentality you do not realize the damage that that is doing to your soul and one of the things that it is doing is a keeping you from recognizing evil when you say yes to the bad compliance are so much more susceptible to abusive relationships and to being in toxic situations because they're saying yes to things that are not good for them their evil radar is then broken and the bible calls us to guard our hearts and to rid ourselves and to flee from sin and abusive relationships toxic situations and people are sinful those are things you should be 
fleeing from and not saying yes to. Which leads me to the second point or B, being a compliant keeps you from saying no to evil because your no muscle is weak. Just like I said, with your love muscle, you need to exercise it. And if you're saying yes to things that are bad, that means you're not saying no to them, which makes it hard in the future to say no to something that you have continually said yes to because then you are met with resistance, you're met with, well, you've said yes before, and it is definitely hard just getting over that first hurdle. It's like the no gets caught in your throat. It's hard to even say no because of how uncomfortable and anxious you get because it's not something that you've practiced or that you're used to. So you're not only more susceptible to evil because it's harder to detect, you also struggle saying no to evil because you're constantly saying yes to it. Now, the next video is also on the same topic of two different boundary problem personalities. This one is actually entitled Dealing with Narcissism. So my favorite point from this is more about a different type of boundary personality disorder, which is a lot more common in men, but these are controllers. Controllers are people who don't respect other people's boundaries. They don't respect someone else's no. These type of people see no as a challenge to change your mind, which I said is great in sales, but it's not so great in family relationships or in a marriage. But just for the sake of this video in summation, there are different types of controllers. So there are aggressive controllers who are very upfront. It is very clear what they're doing, how they're acting, they're aware of it. And then there is manipulative controllers who sometimes aren't even really aware that it's something they're doing because it is ingrained in the way that they behave. They might not even be intentionally thinking that they're being controlling or they might know that they're being controlling, but they have a sly way of coding it that is manipulative. So definitely check out that video if that's something that you struggle with or if that's something you're dealing with in a relationship. Now, the next video is entitled Navigating Family Challenges Through the Psalms. Now, this video is all about the separation of a parent and a child, most specifically a baby and a mom, but the similarities of this separation process and the separation process of people who first start dating as well as newlyweds and just every single season that you go through that there has to be this pruning of coming together, bonding in love, but also separating and remaining two separate individuals while still being bound and rooted in love of this relationship. I feel like so often we will hear that one plus one equals one and often I think that subconsciously we think that what we're hearing is half and half equals one but there is still an individuality that is not correct. It is still one person and one person equaling one, very similar to the Trinity where Jesus is one individual in and of himself and he goes away and he has time to refresh and recharge and the Holy Spirit is one and God is one. They are all individually one, but together they are also one. So one of the biggest things from this video is just remembering that in relationships, we can still be one while maintaining an individual identity. This video also touches on using your past as an ally if this whole hatching process or separation process is something that you struggled with in your family of origin with your parents, if this is something you struggled with in your relationships when you were dating, or maybe it's something you struggled with in your marriage, or maybe it's something that you are currently struggling with that we should look to our past as an ally for our future and that we need to be pruning ourselves. We need to be evaluating 
what we're doing, why we're doing it, why we think the way that we think. And in this video, I just go through a lot of different questions that we need to be consistently asking ourselves in order to evaluate if what you're doing is in alignment with Christ and the way that we are called to be. Now, the next video is entitled Breaking Down the Five Worst Parenting Styles. Now, in this video, probably the funniest example was that when you see a toddler screaming and crying in the supermarket or at the Starbucks and the mom just gets them a lollipop or a cake bar or the juice that they're asking for, it's barely cute when it's a four-year-old, but when that four-year-old turns 34, it is not cute at all. So in this video, I talk about how your spouse might be a loving husband and a good father and a hard worker, but if they are constantly frustrating people around them with immaturity and irresponsibility, but they're not being called out or they're not growing or being held accountable to their word because people don't want to hurt their feelings, that's where you would then go to, skipping ahead, the laws of, I think it's evaluation, the law of evaluation which says is this hurting them or is this harming them and yes you might hurt someone's feeling to hold them accountable if they say they're going to do something they should do it but you're not harming them in holding them accountable it is something that you should do otherwise you will get into your 60s and still be married to somebody who you view see and treat like a child and that is not the way that God intended for marriage to be. Marriage is supposed to be sanctifying and maturing and growing for both spouses. Now, the next video is entitled Mastering Personal Growth and Development of Healthy Biblical Boundaries. So in this video, my favorite law out of the first five is the law of responsibility, which simply says that you are responsible for setting limit on destructive and irresponsible behavior. And that kind of touches on the law of reaping and sowing, because if you are being destructive, then people will set limits on you. But going back to the law of responsibility, we are responsible to give to needs, which is touched a little bit on in the law of respect, but we are also responsible to limit our exposure to sin. We have the power, which is covered under the law of power, to limit our exposure to sin. And ultimately, all of these have to do with the law of motivation, which says, why are you doing X, Y, or Z? And your motivation should always be to grow in love and to grow in Christ. So my favorite law is probably all the laws, but the law of responsibility definitely sums them all up and kind of ties them all together, which is why I picked that one as my favorite. Now, the next video is entitled Developing Healthy Biblical boundaries. So my favorite law of boundaries in the second video is the law of activity because so many boundary problems and boundary issues and just relational issues in general are due to a lack of activity or rather a lack of using our God-given abilities or talents and not stewarding them well. And I talk about the parable regarding talents found in Matthew 25, I believe. But in this parable, the sin or the wicked and lazy servant is the servant who failed to try. Whereas the successful servant, the servant who was praised, tried. He was active and assertive and he used his God-given abilities to grow and to multiply. So in summation, the law of activity just says that we are to steward well what God has blessed us with. The next video in this series is part one of the myths video, which says we are being lied to, common myths about boundaries, the truth behind how to set healthy limits. My favorite point in this video was that an internal no nullifies an external yes. And I talked about 
how God is so much more concerned with our heart posture than he is with our sacrifice. Saying yes but thinking no is just as good as lying. We're called to give with our whole heart, out of love, and without fear. Now, the next video is entitled, We're Being Lied To, Common Myths About Boundaries, don't let misconceptions hold you back part two. My favorite point in this video was just the trigger warning that if you establish boundaries, if you start working through boundaries in your life and just moving towards more of a biblical approach to living, most specifically if the way that you had been living before was not biblical, if you and your spouse were not Christians or you were new Christians, that there will be an increase in disagreement regarding literally everything. But with the disclaimer, my favorite part was also the encouragement that came directly after in that many marriages are strengthened. When you live out your life in a way that honors God, it might come with some conflict in the beginning, some growing pains. But once your life and your marriage is in alignment with God's will, you will see far more blessings and a greater strength in Christ than you would without him. So that is all of the boundary videos so far. If you've watched any of them, you know I never finish a video without a challenge. So my challenge for you guys is pick your favorite point from today or if you haven't already watched the videos to go back and watch your favorite video, to re-watch a video that really stood out to you, or to set up the boundaries playlist, listen through all of the points in the boundaries videos consistently. I do have them all in a playlist, so you could just set them up when you're driving into work, or you could set them up in your office, you could set them up while you're cleaning around the house, but it is so vital, like I said at the beginning of the video, to really understand what a boundary is, myths about boundaries, what they are not, before you can start establishing boundaries in a healthy way in your relationships. So I've done all of the reading for you guys. I have summarized everything into these videos for you. So if you're not a reader, that is perfectly fine. If you don't even like audiobooks, these are a summation of videos recapping what the book says, but in a tangible and practical way. With all that being said, if you guys made it this far in the video, be sure to drop down below and comment a little backpack emoji. And while you're down there, if you guys have any prayer requests or video ideas, be sure to leave me a comment. I love all of your feedback and I would love to be even more interactive with you guys. But with all that being said, if you like this video and you like this video series, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my page and make sure your post notifications are on because like I said, I do post three videos a week. But until then, be blessed and I'll see you guys next time.